Mark Sanchez, Fox NFL analyst, former NFL USC quarterback. Uh, he had the Rams and the Seahawks this past Sunday. He's got the Niners and the Rams. That'll be at uh, 4 Eastern Sunday on Fox. Mark, good to see you again. How's morale? Oh, we're doing great, man. Uh, no complaints over here. Hello to the Danettes. Thank you for having me. Uh, you did uh, give a little bit of a shout out to uh, Josh Allen on Monday night after his fumble, <laughs> which uh, which I did love. And I'd mentioned to the Danettes that I had the ticket from the butt fumble game, which was... Is that the Thanksgiving day? Yeah, this is uh, 2012. Oh, wow. Yeah. You, you know what's crazy is <laughs> growing up, Thanksgiving, love Thanksgiving more than Christmas. <laughs> Before that game... <laughs> I hadn't lost on Thanksgiving. I don't care whether it was like pickup football <laughs> in the street, like nothing. Like that was my day. I felt like I had some like special superpower that day. Obviously not, but <laughs> it was a hell of a run, I feel like, you know, until, you know, until the run ends. And but, that's but, where it goes. but you get unfairly blamed for that. Didn't, didn't the offensive lineman get blown up? Right? Listen, uh, I'll never uh, turn state's evidence. All I know is <laughs> I've listened to the broadcast because Collinsworth called it. Yeah. I listened to the broadcast and it was, you know, what's funny. It's the same exact thing that Josh did the other night. Or I shouldn't say same exact. I, I don't like when analysts do that. And I almost did it. It's very similar. Okay. Because he got the snap and he bobbled the snap because his eyes were somewhere else. He was taking a quick peek at something and boom, he bobbles the snap. And so for me, I was like, trying to turn and boom the running back's not there and i'm like whoa this place totally foobard we gotta go so you just turn around and get back to the line of scrimmage and get down well that's what josh did he's like oop foobard let's roll and so he runs forward and forgets they have a cross sifter and here comes the tight end to kick out the dn and instead of kicking out the dn he just nails josh well instead of me getting back to the line of scrimmage i'm boom and we know the rest of the story so it was um it's unfortunate and it happens but i mean Whatever. Can I get this autographed by you? Ooh. I don't know. My connection's getting fuzzy. What did you ask? If you could uh, autograph the ticket <laughs> from the kidding. butt fumble. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. What, 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 Seaton? I was just going to say, you know, in Mark's defense, Vince Wilfork basically picks up the offensive lineman and throws him into Mark's face. Oh, I know. It was like, I mean, it's not even clear. If you watch it from different angles, it's like Vince Wilfork absolutely manhandles this dude. That is tough. I know. I, that's why I well, said that. That's a tough, that's a tall order to block that guy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, it was tough. But I don't know. See, like, it's one of those things, you know, me and the Danettes can make fun of, me and my boys can make fun of, but you can't, Dan. So I don't know if I can do that for you. Oh, I mean, it's fair. If you don't want to sign it, I don't. That's okay. I'll see if I can get uh, Vince Wolf. You know, I've Wolf gotten that too. before. People have the actual. Oh, jerk! People have the <laughs> um, like the picture of it, like a still photo. Yeah, I've gone to like you know walk out of games and stuff, and we're like winning and everything's cool, and you're slapping hands, and then somebody's like, "Hey, man, will you sign this?" And you're just like, "Dude, who invited this guy?" You know. How often would you line up behind the guard instead of the center? How often does that happen in NFL games? It's happened. It, it's happened. It generally happens when you're uh, correcting something or fixing something when you uh, have a young guy or you need to give a quick reminder and you just kind of lose your space. You know, you lose your awareness of exactly where you're at. And, um, you know, you're saying something to somebody and you just – kind of start lining up but generally you figure it out quickly because something looks off on the defense right something looks like a shade over or two shades over and you're like wait why is this guy standing oh why am i standing here here we go you know uh let's look back on monday night with what happened with rogers uh and and if turf played a role in this in your opinion who listen i know there's a argument for grass i feel that sentiment i think it's much better playing on grass there's a give to grass as opposed to turf the actual you know dirt can just get kind of kicked up and you have a huge divot uh instead of getting locked in um i know there's a huge you know i don't know the science behind uh all these little black pebbles in there the little rubber pebbles yeah. and stuff that people say they're horrible for you and uh, you know, are they ever ingested by players? Probably. Is that going to be like a huge problem down the line? 
I don't know. Uh, but I know it's, you know, once again, like any of these major controversies, it sure seems you follow the money and grass just costs a lot more to maintain. So um, I'm not surprised that it's the way it is. And I'm not surprised that players want to play on grass. I preferred playing on grass. My body felt better after playing on grass. I know, especially for the fast guys, the receivers and DBs and all that. I mean, they were, you know, the low back, the hammies, everything. It just feels kind of weird because there's a there's a bounce back. It's like being on a trampoline a little bit. And when you go back on, you know, a regular surface, it takes a second to almost readjust. So, I mean, what are you going to say? I, I don't know. You're uh, three years younger than Rodgers. Have you reached out to the Jets? <laughs> no, and the reason is I am uh, currently on a hot streak in the booth. I'm undefeated in the booth, baby. I like that. I like haven't that. gotten hit. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm enjoying I'm enjoying this part of my life, and you know, a career pivot, I guess, would be the um, saying de jour. But uh, it's I, I love what I'm doing, and and to even get ready to go again, like. You can go. You can always go. I don't care who you are. If you're if you're a ball player, you can do it. But to do it at that level for that period of time and try and do it consistently with your body at this point, once you've been away from it, that's that's where you get in trouble. I could go play one game. I could go nail a drive right now. You know, I can go play a pickup basketball game if I want. It. But I'm not playing 30 games. You know, you know what I'm saying? I just that's just not where I'm at. Right OK, now. I'm going to let you be the GM of the Jets. What do you do? Oh, gosh. Um, I'm telling you, I saw plenty from Zach, and I've said this before. You could argue both sides, right? Like, go get a guy, and then, okay, is it worth um, the transition period and that person learning the playbook and having to adapt to that person and patchwork, piecework, some of that thing together? Or do we just, you know – go all in on Zach Wilson. He was our guy. He's had Aaron around him for like six months. This could be the best thing for us. And maybe this was supposed to happen and we'll figure out the rest later kind of deal because of the talent we have even more than last year. I mean, one of the biggest things I saw on that broadcast the other night was Garrett Wilson giving like the pump up speech, reminding Zach, like we're good. They're going over plays on the, on the, you know, little iPad surface thing. And it's like, Dude, we're good. We're gonna get open. You just hey, you just get us the ball, get the ball in the air somewhere near me. Mm-hmm. I'll take care of the rest. You know, you can almost get that feeling from from the players. So I think they have enough. I really do. And I've seen enough from Zach to know like if you can just figure out a way, Coach Hackett, to to pull him back and kind of protect him from himself at times, um, you know, you'll you'll be just fine with the roster they have. But we've seen other players, whether it's Josh Allen or other guys, like they have rough games where you try and do too much and you play the hero ball thing and you put the Superman cape on too many times and it goes bad. And the numbers end up, you know, evening out and you take care of the ball for a series of games and people stop talking about it for a while. But um, I think they have enough. I really do think that roster is loaded to the point where, Zach can handle this thing. Uh, it's not ideal for the team. Obviously, they went all in on Rodgers, but... But you still have to order. have a backup, Mark. You have to have somebody who has some experience who doesn't threaten Zach Wilson. But then who do you bring in? Like, if you bring in a Phillip Rivers or Matt Ryan or somebody like that who's established, then what, they're not going to play until they're ready and Zach's going to play? Yes. Kind of. You, you see what I mean? Like, you do some damage to the starter psyche in a way that... I don't know if it's better for. Well, what if I brought in Joe Flacco? Oh, because yeah, because of because of the familiarity. Yes, see, something like that makes sense. Okay, that I can see more than just like, hey, call Tom Brady right now. You know what I mean? If you're bringing in Brady, he's he's the guy. If you're Brady, if you're Brady, would you entertain this idea? Ooh. Uh. It's just so weird because he just did the the retirement. I know. In, he said he was a, a New page, England patriot and then the for life. The first game he'd be back would be like you know you play a game in Dallas or maybe not play and then go play in New England it's, it's against New would England. Be crazy. Oh my god, that would be just insane. But you know, selfishly, if he wants to keep playing and not come take one of these spots at Fox, I'm not going to argue with him. I'm going to root him on and I'll say nice things on the broadcast about him. 
We're talking to uh, Mark Sanchez, the uh, Fox NFL analyst. He's got the Niners and the Rams. After the Rams went to Seattle, that was the biggest surprise for me. At you Incredible. Know, I mean, I, I kept going, what is going on here? You know, you, you, wait, were you saying that in, in the in the broadcast? I, I, re- I really was during the during the timeouts and TV timeouts and everything. I would just hit the mute button and look at Kevin Kugler. I'm like, what in the hell? Like they're handling them, you know. And and I seen both teams practice. It's not that it's not that they didn't have the players in Los Angeles, but you just didn't know all of them, right? And you'd never seen them. And now a bunch of rookies and young players are going to go up to Seattle where they're, they're feeling good. Like the two days before the game, when I'm there in the city, you can tell kind of if you're in a city where the team's got some juice and some energy, like there was something you could feel in that city excited for Geno Smith and this team to take the next step with all their young draft picks really starting to come of age. And it was, it was a great atmosphere for football. So I just you just kind of assume you kind of get lulled to sleep by some of that stuff because it's in your face everywhere and you're like oh, okay this is the way the game probably should go, and the way Stafford played the way they you know got guys like Tutu Atwell and Puka Nakua involved and the other thing I thought was really interesting and Raheem Morris kind of mentioned this to us was um, you know playing with Aaron Donald and these young guys because everybody asks like okay well who else you know the last time they won the Super Bowl it was Von Miller Leonard Floyd and Aaron Donald. Well, when you can name three guys like the Niners coming to town who have Hargrave, Armstead, Bosa, oh, and by the way, Drake Jackson, hailing from USC. When you can name all those guys on the D-line, you know that team's legit. So I couldn't name all these other guys. I'm looking at a bunch of rookies, and they got to play with Aaron Donald. And when you play with Aaron Donald, it's like Raheem Morris made the analogy, like playing with Magic or playing with Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant. Like, you got to learn how to play with them because that dude's going to make some crazy plays and you got to be ready for the no look pass. You got to be ready for the last second dish. You got to go set the pick, do all the dirty work. And every once in a while, you're going to score 15 to 20 points, but not every night. Aaron Donald's going to score the points. He's going to get the sacks. He's going to get the accolades. You got to work with him. You got to go do the dirty work and take on two linemen and the halfback and let him run free and do what he does. So it was interesting watching that happen. And Turner, Byron Young, these guys that they have, they can clearly do it. It was fun to watch. How sustainable is Dion's success at Colorado this initial <laughs> season? I think, listen, they got a lot of momentum. There's no question about that. It's about <clears throat> are they going to be able to adjust, not just uh, game to game, but like halftime, first half to second half? Uh, are these – when when some of this stuff wears off and somebody gets them down, like they were in a little more of a battle last week against Nebraska early. Uh, they were in a battle with TCU, but I want to see them down 10, 14, 21 points and then at halftime and see what this team is about and get them through all those situations. I want to see, um, uh, you know, they're riding so high with confidence because they've checked a lot of those boxes, right? Shador Sanders did it in two-minute drills in crucial situations, third down, red zone. He's been handling it. So I want to see when a game starts real slow for him and then watch him turn on the gas before you like fully jump on the bandwagon. But I can't lie. I've been so impressed and so pleased watching them. You know, I got that that date circled in a couple of weeks for my boys at SC to go play uh, Colorado. Yeah, I know. You got that uh, coming up. That'll be interesting. Oregon against Colorado. Uh, but you got Colorado, Colorado State coming up uh, this weekend. Hey, great to talk to you again, as always, and uh, have fun. Niners, Rams, that'll be at uh, 4 Eastern Sunday on Fox. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it, guys. We'll see you. Mark Sanchez.